Hi, this is Frank. Frank is going to explain to us how to use the PX2. All this information will be covered in your PX2 manual, so feel free to follow along. Let's begin. First, let's make sure your PX2 is connected properly to the control panel app. Step 1. Ensure that all sample interface accessories are connected to the PX2. Step 2. Connect the PX2 to your computer using the provided USB cable. Step 3. Supply power to the unit. Now, open your PX2 control panel app. Now let's go over some of the main features of the PX2 software. To view the application's full range of features, navigate to the Tools drop-down on the menu bar and select Administrative Mode. Then. Enter the administrative password, Apple Blossom. In the menu bar, the user has access to a variety of features, such as logging setup, auto tune, and initial set. The tuner panel on the left gives the user full control of the PX2 settings. The graphing toolbar allows the user to modify which data is currently being viewed within the PX2 control panel app. In the top right, the output value displays the numeric value in either counts or units of measurement. Beneath the tuner is the calibration frame, which displays the output values along with their calibration points. The auto-tune button will prompt the unit for calibration. The 4 to 20 milliamp calibration button will prompt the unit for calibration of the 4 to 20 milliamp output. And the initial set button allows the user to reset the full scale calibration without needing to recalibrate the unit. Finally, the graphing area displays the selected data to trend. To change the graphing area view, use the drop-down menu at the top of the panel. Users can double-click to zoom in on the graphs. In this section, we'll describe the function of the tuner sliders in the PX2 control panel app. While there are many signals you are able to monitor, the primary signals you'll be typically looking at are the measure light and the reference light signals. Also, keep in mind that the PX2 will automatically optimize the tuner settings for your specific application through the auto-tune button. Adjusting the range will affect both the measure and reference outputs. Increase this value to decrease measure light and reference light output. Adjusting the integration time will affect both the measure and reference outputs. Increase this value to increase measure light and reference light output. Adjusting the reference gain will affect only the reference outputs. Increase this value to increase reference light output. In fluorescence measurements, adjusting the measure gain will affect only the measure outputs on fluorescent units. Increase this value to increase measure light output. The calibration points fields allow the user to manually adjust the PX2's calibration points. Adjusting the averaging field will change the number of measurements averaged together. Finally, adjusting the interval field will change the measurement interval, or the time between each individual measurement. In this section, we'll discuss the internal signals of the PX2. The output is the calibrated numeric value shown in units of measurement. The output signal is the raw signal from the sample at the wavelength of interest. This measurement is derived from the logarithmic ratio of measure and reference signals. The measure light signal is the signal from the measure detector when the light source is turned on. This is the primary signal used for monitoring the analyte of interest. The measure dark signal is the signal from the measure detector when the light source is turned off. This signal is used to remove the effects of ambient light and electronic noise on the measure detector. The reference light signal is the signal from the reference detector when the light source is turned on. This signal is used to remove the effects of light source drift over long periods of time. The reference dark signal is a signal from the reference detector when the light source is turned off. This signal is used to remove the effects of electronic noise on the reference detector. 
In this section, we'll describe how to log data using the PX2 Control Panel app. Logging data will allow you to create a .csv file and allow the user to add testing notes that are saved directly into the log file. Logging to file is disabled by default, so follow along to make sure you're logging data correctly. First, navigate to the Logging Setup option in the Tools drop-down menu. Ensure that Enable Logging is checked to begin logging to file. Unchecking the box will disable logging. Every time logging is enabled or disabled for the same log file, a break will be added in the data to differentiate between two data sets. Select where your log file will be saved by clicking Browse and navigating to the desired folder. Under Log Name, enter in a name for the log file. Next to Logging Interval, select how frequently data will be saved to the log file. This does not have to be the same as the measurement interval. Use the Data to Log dropdown to select which pieces of data to save for each individual measurement. In order to save all measurements, choose the Select All option in the drop-down menu. Finally, under Log Notes, enter in any testing notes prior to the start of logging. To change log notes, logging must be disabled and restarted once the notes have been updated. In this section, we'll describe how to set up the calibration using Autotune. Step 1. Put on the appropriate PPE for handling samples. Step 2. Connect your sample interface accessories. For fluorescence, simply connect your fluorescence probe. For absorbance, you'll instead connect your cuvette holder, flow cell, or probe. Step 3. Gather 1 to 5 representative samples. The following procedure describes the absorbance calibration of the PX2. Step 1. Select Tools, Auto-Tune to begin. Step 2. Specify the number of calibration points. Step 3. Fill the sample interface accessory with the non-absorbing background sample. Step 4. Fill in the concentration in the first text box, and then select Number 1 Test Sample. Step 5. When prompted, remove the sample, clean out the sample interface accessory, and replace with the next sample in ascending order. Repeat steps 4 through 5 for each of the remaining samples. We'll now describe the fluorescence calibration of the PX2. Step 1. Select Tools, Auto-Tune to begin. Step 2. Specify the number of calibration points. The Auto-Tune setup feature will reset the span or max point. Step 3. Fill the sample interface accessory with the highest concentration sample. Step 4. Fill in the concentration, numeric value only, in the first test box, and then select First Test Sample. Step 5. When prompted, remove the sample, clean out the sample interface accessory, and replace the next sample in descending order. Repeat steps 4 through 5 for each of the remaining samples. After Autotune is complete, the PX2 Control Panel app will automatically apply the units of measurement to an engineering unit, such as PPM and the output will adjust to the calibrated scale. If you're experiencing inaccuracies or issues in your measurement, it may be time to recalibrate the PX2. Users can recalibrate or use the Auto Setup function to re-reference the unit without altering any of their calibration points. In this section, we'll describe the functions of the various LED alarms that may appear on your PX2. The PX2 will glow red when the normally open contact closure is closed. The alarm will be set if the measurement detector is saturated at 100%, the reference detector is saturated at 100%, or the reference light and dark signals are within 5% of each other. In the event of a red alarm, the unit must be recalibrated using Auto-Tune. The PX2 will glow green when running through Auto-Tune. During this operation, the alarm is on. Alternatively, you can close the contacts between terminals 5 and 6 to initiate auto setup 
This should only be done on your non-absorbing background or your highest fluorescing sample. The PX2 will glow blue during normal operating status. During this operation, the alarm is off. Congratulations! You've done it! You've successfully learned how to operate your PX2 photometric transmitter. If you have any more questions, you can review your PX2 manual or send an email to support at customsensors.com.